I recently bought a new house and I decided to upgrade my Wi-Fi to the best Eero system available, the Eero Max 7. This is the perfect opportunity to start fresh and optimize the placement of all the nodes throughout my house, which is a lot of fun for a nerd like me. And after three months, my conclusion is clear. The Eero Max 7 is a beast. It's easily the strongest performing mesh Wi-Fi system that I've ever tested. The stability for me has been top notch with no interruptions whatsoever. The Max 7 even fixes all the issues that I had with the Pro 6 from my last review. However, despite all of its strengths, I decided that I'm going to sell the Max 7 after I'm done with this video. And I'll go back to using my Euro 6 Plus. The reason why is simple. It's just overkill for my home's layout and the maximum speed that I can get from an internet provider in my town it's just one gigabit per second. The Euro 6 Plus can handle everything I need for about 20% of the cost. So you might be thinking I'm an idiot for even attempting to use the Max 7 with single gigabit speeds, and that's fair. But I think many other people will find themselves in a similar situation. 75% of the homes in the United States can't even get gigabit speeds, never buying faster than that. So this is a review for people wondering if the Max 7 is worth it if you're on a gigabit or slower plan. My home and attached garage are about 2,600 square feet combined, and I wanted full coverage of everything in a tiny bit of the backyard. After playing with a bunch of configurations, I decided on a two node configuration, and I used the same two spots for each model for all my testing. When I first moved in, I used the Euro Max 7 for three straight months, and it worked perfectly, literally not a single complaint. At my 12 different designated locations throughout my home, I averaged about 600 megabits per second on my M2 MacBook Air. And given that my ISP maxes out at 1,000 megabits per second, I'm super happy with these real life results. It's also worth noting that when I was in the same room as the gateway router, I could get up to 900 megabits per second wirelessly, which is awesome. To get a clearer picture of the Max 7's power without any constraints from my internet service provider, I set up an iPerf 3 server on my MacBook. And to test the throughput speeds, I used my iPhone 15 Pro and 16 Pro, both of which utilize the 6 GHz band. On average, I got 660 megabits per second for the throughput. This result was a bit surprising since I expected to see a noticeable improvement when connecting the 6 GHz band, but I maxed out in the high 900s. The range of the 6 GHz band is much shorter than the 5, but I was able to maintain my connection to the 6 GHz band as long as I stayed within 20 feet of the gateway router. Overall, the Euro Max 7's average throughput speeds in my house was a huge upgrade over the Pro 6e which I tested last year, especially in a home that doesn't have many phones that are Wi-Fi 6e or Wi-Fi 7 compatible. Yet. This is largely thanks to the Max 7's 4x4 radio in the 5 GHz band compared to the 2x2 radio on the Pro 6e 5 GHz band. I still had my 6 plus nodes from my previous house and I was curious to see how they would stack up to the Max 7 so I did that for a couple of months. And I was pretty surprised with the results and in the same 12 testing locations I averaged 432 megabits per second with my MacBook Air and when testing for throughput with my iPerf 3 server I averaged 468 megabits per second. So that means in real life and my throughput testing the Max 7 was about 50% faster than the 6 Plus. The difference between 400 and 600 just isn't noticeable in real life when you have a limited amount of devices in your home. Although the range between these models was noticeably different. With a two node configuration, the Max 7 was able to pump signal deep into my backyard, whereas the 6 Plus was only able to do a little bit of my backyard. But if backyard range becomes important to me, I actually have the perfect location in my garage where I can put a third Euro 6 Plus node. Three node setup like this would definitely degrade my overall network performance a bit, but I would probably get comparable coverage compared to the two nodes with the Max 7. With great speed comes some compromise. I've always mocked the Netgear Orbi nodes for being gigantic and hard to hide and kind of ugly. I fell in love with Eero originally years ago because of their sleekness and their small design with no antennas. They just didn't look like a traditional ugly black router and I really appreciated this. But it turns out to get better performance in thermals, you probably have to make your nodes a bit bigger. The Euro Max 7 is similar in shape to an Orbi device with a glossy finish instead of matte. In the extra ports, are awesome. Meanwhile, the smaller Euro 6 Plus units can be hidden away easily without taking up much room, but you only get two Ethernet ports per node, which means you only have three available in a two node setup. Most people are probably saying, who cares what it looks like? I want the best Wi-Fi possible. And that's a fair stance, but for someone on the fence, the design is what tipped the scale in favor of the 6 Plus for me.
If you have a multi gig plan available in your area and you have a lot of six gigahertz capable devices and you want to maximize your speeds, the Euro 7 Max is going to be a huge upgrade over the 6 Plus on paper at least. But I'm willing to bet that 90% of households wouldn't notice a difference between the Euro Max 7 and Euro 6 Plus in day to day use. While the Max 7 is Wi Fi 7 compatible, most devices in the wild just aren't compatible with the six gigahertz band yet. Euro claims that the Max 7 can handle up to 200 devices simultaneously and the two node configuration can cover up to 5,000 square feet. On the other hand, the Euro 6 Plus can only handle 70 devices simultaneously. And if you have a single gigabit plan like I do, but more devices than I do, like call it 50 or above, you might want that third band, but you don't necessarily need the Euro Max 7. Even though it's a few years old, Euro Pro 6 still makes a ton of sense. Although slower, it does have a 4x4 radio, just like the 7 Max. And it's a much better bet than the Pro 6e in today's environment. Amazon has them refurbished at 130 per node, which is a great deal and makes a ton of sense if you're scared off by the Max 7 price, but you want the third band. So to sum things up, I'm not saying the Euro Max 7 is a bad system, far from it. It's just not the best value for my house and it might not be the best value for your house either. If you want the best Euro system ever made and money's no object, just go with the Euro 7 Max. But for most homes in 2024, the Euro 6 Plus will do just fine. And if you have a lot of simultaneous devices and you want that third band, I think the Euro Pro 6 is a great value refurbished. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these systems. Thanks for watching. I'm out.